Hey everyone and welcome to another episode about the LEGO Train Automated Container Terminal. In the previous episode I was talking about the monorail problem that I have. I have two monorail tracks beneath the blue crane which is finished that need to go to the red crane where the containers are transported to and from a railway system. Now, um, the problem that I had was how to connect all these systems together. So I came up with this solution. Two monorail tracks that go to the red crane and in the middle is the, is the railway. And the railway needs to be in the middle because of reasons. Check out the last episode, uh, the previous episode where, uh, where I explained that. Um, now there was also uh, an idea of using just one single track using a switch which involved uh, this system. Now actually not this system because I didn't have this curve right then in the previous episode i only had two curves that were a bit different if you look at the dents you can see that this one is different from these two so i only had uh, that one that one connected to a switch would go in that direction and then i needed another one to go in that direction and as you can see i would end up something like here and that's not going to fit on that so that was not an option. Now, of course, you guys are very smart. You said, well, you got another curve and I knew that, but I just didn't think about it. I actually had one in my uh, monorail collection, fortunately, so I can show you this. And um, this actually is a good idea. And I can connect this one to here and then this goes all the way. I think uh, the, the, the curves aren't there. This goes all the way to that and that actually fits perfectly so by mistake i've chosen a distance between the monorail monorail tracks beneath the blue crane that actually fits on a switch like this now there are two problems with this system the first problem is it has a switch and these monorail switches they tend to not work very well Maybe I can add some lubricant or something, I don't know. But like this, ah, here it goes. Here, it works, but eh, now it's stuck again. It doesn't work very well. So it's not very reliable and I need a reliable system uh, because I'm building the whole thing to be a reliable, of course. So that's a minus one point for this uh, system. The other thing is that in this configuration, I only have one monorail track going to the red crane and that's a pity because i like to see things moving so two monorail tracks going to the red crane means basically that i can have move around two monorail trains which is way cooler of course so uh, it looks better so i decided to keep my current solution which you see here with this distance now this distance that you see here is more or less uh, the distance that uh, that you actually also need. And I'm gonna show you that in the red crane because I have been working on the red crane. As you can see, um, this is the, now the same, this is the same distance that I have um, in the configuration uh, in the blue crane. And uh, there's the rail in the middle now, the railway. And as you can see with the switches here, it just fits. I could spare like two studs here and two studs there, but it's not much. So I couldn't get any smaller than this, just a fraction. The, so I think this system would work just fine. Now, as you can see, I completely stripped the red crane. Let me see you stripped. And that's because I needed to make it wider. And that's what I've done. This is now the width that, uh, that I'll be using. And it runs on uh, train wheels so it runs very smoothly and the main advantage of this is that I probably only have to use a drive gear on one side as the other side moves along very smoothly so I already add some uh, plates here to add some gear racks but probably I don't I don't need it so that would solve me a lot of trouble soldering and wires and stuff like that um, I had to do it on the blue crane two motors here as you see 
I had to do it because the blue crane runs on the gear racks, um, which have a, a lot of uh, resistance, friction. So uh, that's why I uh, used two modes there, but maybe I could put it off by using just one motor. That would be cool. Now, um, it is also stripped because uh, I was getting rid of the uh, system that I use right now for the uh, EV3 motors with the special EV3 board or NXT board or whatever you want to call it. And uh, that's going out and, and the powered up system will be going in. Now, thank you for the also the suggestions about the crane that was looking too bulky. There was a whole row of these uh, stuffs uh, here on the on top and it was looking not very cool. So uh, I changed that, ripped this off. I put the lighting now below. It was up here on top of these uh, things here. And now it's uh, below here, which is a nicer position. I need to uh, get some uh, parts though. I only have them in white, as you can see the plates with, uh, what, is, what is that? The plate modified with the bar. And uh, I could actually use the, the same lighting so the cables were uh, long enough, so that's cool. So uh, there will be a, uh, a nice channel of uh, cable ducts underneath here, which is made of, uh, I used that also in the uh, previous crane. I don't know, I don't have a example here. Yes, here it is. Look, see, so it's uh, it's just a, uh, a plate and a, or, or a brick and a panel, and uh, you guide some wires between them. Uh, so uh, lots of st lots of r room for enough wires so I can stick this one up here and you don't see the wires anymore. How cool is that? So busy on that. I'm going to work on the crane a bit further, make it uh, look nice, make it functional of course. That's the, the main idea of course. And uh, well that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you have any other suggestions please let me know. If you like this video please drop a like. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And uh, thank you for watching once again. Hope to see you next time. Bye.